We better hurry or we'll get soaked. Where on earth does all this water come from? From the clouds, of course. Where else? Okay, smarty pants, but where did the clouds come from? Hey guys, I'm Droplet. I overheard you guys talking about where rainwater comes from. Haven't you heard about the water cycle? No. no. It's how we refer to the way that water moves around Earth. Both water on land and in the sky. It all starts with the sun. The heat from the sun warms the seawater, which evaporates and rises high into the atmosphere where it collects into clouds. Wait, what? Evaporation? I've never seen water going upwards. <laughs> OK, water can be liquid, like the water we drink, solid, like ice, or gas, like the steam from a kettle. That's water too. Water changes from liquid to gas, or steam, through processes that we call evaporation and transpiration. More big words. Evaporation is when liquid water heats up and is turned into steam, going upwards into the atmosphere. Like when mom makes me pasta. The water boils and turns into steam. Exactly. Even when we dry our clothes out on the roof. The sun warms the water in the clothes, so it evaporates into the atmosphere and the clothes dry. Another way that water ends up in the atmosphere is through transpiration. This is water that comes out of living things. Humans, animals, even trees. Like our breath or our sweat? Yes. When the water goes up into the atmosphere, it turns into tiny drops of water and these form the clouds that fly all over the world. When they collect a lot of water, they get very heavy and can't hold any more. And that's why drops of water start to fall in the form of rain. Now I understand how rain falls. And it's not only rain. Water can fall back to Earth as snow or hail. I don't like it when it hails. Yeah, it'll be really cold. Do you know what this part of the water cycle is called? When the water comes back down to Earth? Yeah, I've had the weathermen call it pre precip pres precipitation. When water in the atmosphere comes back down to Earth. As I said earlier, first water is turned to steam thanks to the sun's heat. But when it gets cold, the opposite happens and steam, or clouds, turn to water. We see this happening in our homes. We call this process condensation, when steam becomes water. I know this one. When I have a shower, there will be little droplets everywhere. On the shower, the tiles, all around the room. That's right. When steamed water touches something colder, like your bathroom tiles, the steam turns back to water. Even when you blow against a window pane in winter, the steam in your breath turns into water on the glass. So when rainwater falls on Earth, it ends up in the soil, on our roads, rocks or in the sea. The water that falls on the soil forms rivers or lakes, or it goes through our rocks very slowly. In Malta, water also passes through our valleys. I love walking in valleys. Some of this rainwater seeps into the soil and goes all the way down to our aquifers. This water remains underground, in the rocks. Any water that falls on our roads flows into the ditch at the side of the road or into the sea. At the end of the day, nearly all water finds its way to the sea and the water cycle starts all over. So our water never runs out because the cycle keeps going. It's true that the water cycle is always turning. But we have to be careful, because the fresh water that we can actually use to live is very little. A lot of the water in the world is either in the sea, which is salty, so it's no good for us, or up in the atmosphere in the form of clouds, or frozen as ice in our mountains and north and south poles. Now that the sun is out, all this talk about water has made me thirsty. I'd love a glass of cold water. We better get home, because Mum will be waiting for us. Bye, kids! This project is part financed by the European Union under the Cohesion Fund, European Structural and Investment Funds 2014-2020.